Hey, everybody, welcome to the T3 Fit Scoliosis podcast. I know it's been a while, but we are back and we are back with a really, really special guest. Um, in my book, she is uh, one of the top. Um, and we were talking previously and I got a little emotional about it. Her name is Dr. Hagit Berdyshevsky, if I'm correct. Okay, I did it correctly. Excellent. Um, she is a guest here today, and I hope that you know her. And if you don't, please do yourself a favor and find out who she is, because there are people who are Schroth specialists who have worked with her, and she has um, welcomed to, she has agreed to come on the podcast and talk about her journey with Schroth method with scoliosis and with the people that she has impacted along the way. She is currently in Israel. Um, I know that she also teaches in New York City. Uh, Dr. Hagit, I would like to welcome you to the show. Thank you very much, Teresa. It's my honor and I, I'm really willing to speak about everything, answer any question and help and help uh, grow the knowledge about how to treat scoliosis conservatively mainly this is my area i can talk about surgeries as well from vast experience but anything anything that will help uh, our community thank you thank you would you share with us from the beginning how did you get into this what drove you to become a shroth specialist Sure. So I was really lucky. I I, I want to say the whole career is 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 about. Yeah, it's also being lucky, and of course, uh, putting yourself and 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 seeking for for what you love to do and what you feel you can be good at and contribute. I was working at the hospital for special surgery as my first job right after physical therapy school. And um, at this hospital had had because he already left the greatest. I think one of the one of the great today, the greatest back then, is spinal and scoliosis surgeon Doctor Buachi, okay. who is um, um, he, he used to be at the time that I worked there. He used to be the chair of the Scoliosis Research Society, which I hope okay. everybody knows about this society. It's the it's really the top of the umbrella of everything related to the guidelines and treatment of people with scoliosis. It's a, 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 a surgeon, uh, but also now physical therapist and orthotist and whoever care for scoliosis. This is the organization to try to belong to. And read. so he was the head of that organization. Luckily, in the hospital that I was working, I developed interest for the spine more than a hip or shoulder or hand. Um, I don't know to explain exactly, but the spine was always a mystery because you can't really see inside. And I, I, I just, I just asked this doctor Buachi, who I knew about, to follow him. And then he have uh, his own foundation for complex spine surgeries in Africa, Ghana. I joined his foundation. I traveled there four times. I helped uh, children from all over Africa to, to rehabilitate after complex spine surgeries. And... And this is really my path with scoliosis begins right there in 2009. Okay. And, and from there, from there, um, you know, the doctors in Africa, they did the surgery. We, the physical therapists, rehabilitate them. But Dr. Buachi really always mentioned that he doesn't want to operate on so many children. And if something conservatively can be done ahead of time, recognized, uh, researched, he would prefer to operate one child out of 10 and nine okay. of them to try to solve conservatively. And he he guided me and, and, and supported me and led me towards reaching education about conservative management. And it just took off 
it just took off. I okay. immediately found the, the, the Schrott Clinic in Germany, mm -hmm. which is the original uh, Katharina Schrott Clinic. I I didn't even think twice. I registered for the course there. It, it's a 10-day course for physical therapists to become certified in the method for the first time really meeting patients, adolescents primarily with scoliosis, treating them while learning about it and becoming certified first in the German method, later in the Barcelona scoliosis physical therapy school method with Dr. Rigo, which I also feel very blessed to meet and follow his lead, become an instructor for the method to America. We are five instructors to the method in all United States. Wow. Uh, seeking. Okay. Um, you know what? Actually, I'm going to take it back. It's a statement okay. that uh, I, I used. Right. When for BSPTS, for the for that school, the first school I was joining, it's a, we were five therapists, uh, instructors. Now that I um, took a part and opened my own, with my partner, Scoliosis and Spine Online Learning, mm -hmm. SSOL Schrott, we are also one, two, three, four, we are also five. Okay. So we have more teacher now. What's what's the difference between the Barcelona method and the Katarina Schroth method? Or is there a difference? Think, right. There, there, and, and we also have, now I'm owning my own school, which is the SSOL Schroth. Right. Yes. Me and my partner, Andrea Lebel. Um, and we have uh, great teachers. The, there is really no big difference friends so any any patient that can find Barcelona school or another German school or SSOL short school as long as in my they are all great short schools that okay. teaches yes a little bit nuances a little bit more experience here experience there but we we are pretty similar to each other okay okay and when did you open your school um, around 2000, I think 16 or 17. Okay. Okay. And we have uh, a mutual friend, Dr. Beth Terranova. She has, was, was, and is sometimes one of your students and she comes and does guest appearances when you're in New York. Um, oh, right. Did she, did she study with you when, since you've had your school? Do you know? Yeah, she studied with me before when I was part of BSPTS. Okay. And then she studied with me and actually helped me. She's she's now in the level of really assisting courses. She's high level short mm -hmm. therapist, excellent short therapist, plus uh, all her qualities as a an fitness instructor and physical therapist. And uh, yeah, many times she comes as a as a model and as a, an assistant for the teaching. And and you, so with your school, that's an online program that you have, but you partially, are, partially. I'm sorry, partially, the, okay. The, the, Schrott, the Schrott courses, to become a certified, it's practical frontal courses. These are not online. The online are a lot of uh, webinars and educations that everyone can view any patient or, or a healthcare provider, but not the course. The courses are, the, the short courses are frontal. Okay, okay. And and how does it, so do you also have clients that are one-on-one? -on -one? I mean, we have this world of opportunity since COVID. Um, how does that work with you, with your one-on-one -on -one clients? Do you, okay. Are you all yes. over the world or share that with us, please? <laughs> sure. So right now I am. I have two locations. I live in Israel and I also come to New York and I have a, okay. an apartment and studio there in the city. In Israel, this is my studio. As you can see, this is my yep. wall bar and everything else. So I treat here 
one-on-one -on -one, um, patients, adolescent and adult, pre, post operation or non operation, almost every day, you know, a few hours a day. When I come to New York, usually it's ahead of time. My my I, I, I see patients there. I book them ahead of time. They know the dates. And I see patients in New York periodically. Okay. And the Zoom, as you said, the Zoom or telehealth, as we call it, is, is fantastic. It's actually really a call for patients. It demands, you know, a little bit mastering, but I think everybody master now how to exercise in front of the computer through COVID. Um, the instructions, if, if, if a therapist and me I, I i i do it hours every day for three for three years already so it's very easy for me i can sense and actually i can zoom in and i can zoom out yeah and i i'm i'm skilled i don't want to say anything but you can be skilled in teaching the exercises through the computer very well i just finished okay. before i came to meet you i had two zoom with one with United States and one with Taiwan even. Wow, okay. Yeah, so people from all over the world and it works. And generally, what I wanted to tell you, when you told me that your daughter was treating for two years, the, it is highly important, and that's why you can do it via Zoom. It is highly important that patients will learn in 10 to 20 sessions, even no more than that, really make mm -hmm. sure, me as an instructor, they learn all the exercise to practice at home by themselves yeah. and not dependent on a therapist. But, of course, some wants and they have the budget and they can, or insurance cover, then fantastic. Yeah. And you, you can get as many sessions as you can. It's always good yeah. to have one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, but if not... You have the recording. At the end, I always send the recording. Mm -hmm. And the, the person is opening a file with all the recordings, 10 sessions, 20 sessions, and repeat them every day. It's like you have a bank of short exercises, particularly to you. Yeah, it, it's, it, it, sets a, it sets a foundation Correct. for them, for, for, for life. For practice for life and it's uh would you share with us some of the differences on how so somebody who uh, has scoliosis with a non-fusion versus somebody who has a fusion a fusion what are some of the differences in the exercises and how what they can do and what they can do what they shouldn't do and yeah could you elaborate on that for us yeah wow the the, the... We can do a whole webinar just on post-operative guidelines. Um, first, to say it really depends on the surgeon preference, when to start the therapy and what to do in the therapy. Okay. If they know, most of them now, most surgeons know the short therapist community. So we have, let's say, I, I affiliated with Columbia University, and mm -hmm. we have a guidelines for post-operative. And the guidelines, though they are guidelines, but they are very, you know, it's, at the end it's individual to the therapist, their skills, their experience, and the patient, what type of uh, correction they had. Is it a lumbar fixation or thoracic fixation? Is it vertebral body tethering? Or is it fusion with screws? There are little differences. Okay. Well, um, then we also look what is what is the state? Are the is the is the is the patient two weeks, four weeks, two months, six months? We gradually increase core stabilization always in addition to the shrot. Okay. So it's very important to progress core stability and mobility arms and squats and lunges and walking and you know slowly increase the intensity and the strength and regarding schrott we need to we need to check what is the need usually the rib cage after the operation 
or before the operation was we 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 had some concavities, some collapsed ribs, some now it's not immediately the ribs are open and expand. So all the expansion technique and the breath is similar for those who are not operated to those who are okay. operated. We do the okay. same expansion, the same lengthening. Uh, positions, you can use almost every position without a, a surgery for patients with surgery. Almost all the short exercises can be done post-operatively, but with a with a with a sense. I'm not going to pull somebody, you know, there's a lot of traction before the operation to lengthen the spine, to, mm -hmm. to, to prepare the spine for correction. Mm -hmm. Once you've used any way, we don't need to traction, we don't need to because you already you already fused. What's the point of traction? Now the point is more to stabilize the trunk. Okay. It, but if there is an if you been fused in the thoracic and the lumbar is free and the lumbar still need correction, then the lumbar area with the curve that was not fused will get the same exercises that someone without fusion. So it's very similar, mind opening, the, the therapist get the education how to what to teach the patient you sense the the the, the phases of the recovery but it's it, you it's it's similar and individual for many other reasons okay and so this leads me to another question cuz i've heard this along the way when people have rods or even tethering and it breaks the rods break or the wire from the tethering snaps. In your expertise, what would somebody do with that as a Shroff specialist? Um, do we what? When something like that happens, it's back to, yeah. the, it's back to the surgeon. Okay. So it's Definitely. so you're not okay, okay. Yes, that was that was my question because I right, I don't right, yeah I right. I I mean I hear these stories about these situations happening, and I go very I go very dark with it because of my own journey, um, but I didn't know if there's something that as a Schroth specialist that you could still work with even if it's broken. So, if you hear if the if the patient suspect. If they heard a popping, I, I had a patient who who went to the to get uh, new denim jeans, very mm -hmm. tight jeans, just in the in the fitting room, put on the jeans, heard a pop in the back, and that was a, a, a breakage of actually a, a road. Wow. So yeah, no, no, but it's not a you know when. when when the fusion is been done, it's very stable spine. It's, mm -hmm. it's usually stable. If something breaks, it the, it's not the spine that breaks. So right. it's not always even even it, it, there's no must there's not always pain involved in that. But you heard something or you feel something. If there is any suspect, it's like a red flag. You refer back to the doctor. The doctor can say, "Hey, okay, I'm scheduling you." in a month or I, I i'm not sure maybe next week but the person is still living and moving around so not for therapy i think this is the time you mm -hmm. take a, a stop because you never mm -hmm. know what's happening that the person is waiting for the operation they can they you know they're functioning okay but i wouldn't i wouldn't continue with the with therapy until i get the clearance from the doctor Okay. Okay. Yeah. It was just, it was a question that I just thought about. Cause I, like I said, I've heard Mary, many stories where people's the, the rods break or the tethering, you know, the possibility of that to, is there to break as well. And I, I'm not an expert in that department. So that's why I'm. Yeah. 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 I'm, yeah. If they, <laughs> if they have to say, continue, continue to exercise until we, until we schedule you and the person mm -hmm. is, you know, they go to school. I, I'm not sure the situation, so it's very okay. individual. Okay. We'll okay. To the doctor. Okay. Would you um 
So you have patients that range from children to older adults. Correct. Would you sh would you share with us some of your favorite stories of some of your patients without giving names, of course? Or do you have a favorite story? Um, I have I have really my poster child, but she's not a child. She's an eighty seven year eighty seven year old, maybe a little bit less. I don't want it. And uh, she's a woman. She's a woman from the Upper West Side, who at the moment she was diagnosed was very on it to do the most and the best that she can do to help herself and avoid the surgery. That was about 10 years ago. Um, and the devotion, the, she sat, she set her, uh, her bedroom with already mattresses, one mattress for all the exercises lying on the back with all the rice bag and the poles and the marks where to put the legs, everything's organized. And one mat, mat, not mattress, mat for the exercises lying on the stomach and all the equipment. And she does the exercises like a 30 year old, very impressive. She exercises seven days a week, seven days, maybe one hour, one and a half hours of the short exercises. Mm -hmm. She go on the floor, 87. She does the supine with the belt and the traction and the rice bags and the poles. She is just super. She will forever will be my role model for um, compliance. And that really, I want to say, compliance is number one in success. Of course, there is a curve type, curve size, but in everything whatever the curve will go with that person being compliant to the treatment or to yeah. the yes so i i see her four times a week for 10 years now with wow. zoom zoom four times a week and on time amazingly and she's she really made a difference in her body muscularly muscularly we cannot change the bone at this age right Right. Masculinely holding herself better. And That's another one. story yes. is, a, is a teenager, a teenager from New York City, was diagnosed around age 12 with a surgical candidate um, curved 51 degree. Okay, okay. It was diagnosed 51. And the family saw about six doctors in the city, six second opinions. Each one of them, of course, says operation. You are 12, you, uh, you have maybe a year and a half to grow. This is really gonna get, it can get 70, yeah. 80. But the girl was a high athlete and she's a very, very strong person. And the mother also a very supportive, and I guess also in terms of the body image, it it was more like the double curve when your body okay. is still centered, not the hips and the pelvis okay. go to one side, which can distort your mind. And then you want the operation to, yeah. to look to look better. She had she looked good, but she had big curve. Her her, I don't know, sixth opinion or seventh opinion recommended. Okay, you know what? Nothing to lose. Try the short method, try bracing at 51 degrees. And she did it. And I met her at HSS where it all just began. She was one of my first when short just arrived to New York City. Okay. I, 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 again, I don't want to speak about myself. I'm speaking though, the whole interview is about but I brought the the short method to New York City. It was not in the in this in in New York City or New York State for sure the city. So she was one of the first to receive a short in 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 New York City, and very devoted family. The the combination, the relationship between the family support and the child, 
the relationship is so crucial yeah. for the success yeah. as much as yeah. for life yeah and yeah and yeah. she went down from 51 to 30 30 oh. very good she ended up growing correct with 30 degrees no surgery beautiful now she's 20 something year old got accepted to when she got to college she got accepted to high league high league okay and it, you you say that you brought it to new it wasn't in new york city and i know that you know Keta, the katachina schroth um institute, it's been around for like 100 years right and it didn't come into the states till 2005 that's a whole other conversation <laughs> correct Correct. I mean, like, I wish we had had it when, you know, when I was diagnosed, it's been around for hundreds for a hundred years. So what's the excuse? But why do you think it took so long to get to the States? And, and, and why were you the first to bring it to New York City? Uh, there are two reasons. The more supportive reason is really because to bring a method, especially to the United States, it's like you need an FDA approved. We yeah. don't need an FDA. There is no FDA for physical therapy. But you need a high level randomized control trials to okay. justify a method. And this was not exist. There were thousands of cases in Germany, particularly you can... There are articles of hundreds and thousands of cases, good, successful. You open the book, you can see the success, and there are lots of papers. But there was no randomized control trial. Okay. And without that, the Scoliosis Research Society, I was talking about it before with Dr. Mm -hmm. Buachi as leader at the time that I pursued the short method, if you don't have that, basically, it was not enough, the experience. There is something to say about it, but also, and, and you know, slowly, when there is more experience, there will be more papers. And that's what we have now. Now we have enough satisfying high-level, randomized, blinded control trials are very important. So this method is supported by the surgeons who come to our conferences even, and okay. we are a team right now. It's a beautiful team in the United States. And if That's someone huge. encounter a surgeon, a scoliosis specialist, I always say to my patients and to my students that come from the Middle West, the Middle East, and they say that our surgeon never heard about Schroth, never heard about the bracing. If they don't, and you introduced it, and they are washing it off, I'm sorry, look for another person. Go for another, fly to New York yep. City, get your treatment. You don't need a lot. You will need once a year follow-up with a good team supporting the whole yeah. circle of conservative method built from the surgeon, the orthotist, the physical therapist, maybe whatever you need, but everyone working together. Yeah. So that was one reason. Second reason it didn't come. Europe, Europe versus United States. It's always, you know, it, it's not. And the surgeons, at the beginning, I had a lot of um, antagonism from the surgeons I work at Hospital for Special Surgery, which okay. is the number one hospital in the United States for orthopedics. And they, 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 they were, they... They were apprehensive, and they, they also were afraid that we will declare that you can correct the curves and not have surgery or steal their patients to the conservative. Yeah. I understand it as well. I understand it because I can, you know, now that I, 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 I release instructors and sometimes I see false statements coming on the internet we can correct your spine. This is the whole talk by itself. We can correct yeah. your spine. The, uh, doing things that are really not in line with what we teach. We are mm -hmm. an adjunct to the patient, adjunct to the surgeon. 
we follow, I follow the guidelines of the SRS. I'm not trying even to go against or declare something. Yeah. So there were reasons, I guess there were reasons. It's, yeah, it's a very interesting subject because I've talked with, Beth and I spoke about this and I've talked with other people about it, you know, and if the surgeon says, if they don't, if they're not even open to hearing about troughs, then it's not a, it's not about the patient. And correct. it should be about the correct. patient. Correct. Correct. And, and that's that the, the yeah, patient that, and the family should be sensitive enough to that. Yeah. And that I agree. that hurts. That hurts. That hurts. Listen, when I came to HSS, I I I'm I'm a pursuer. I'm a I'm a high pursuer. I'm coming from an Israel country. I was a tank commander. I was the first uh, uh, tank uh, lieutenant in the Israeli army. And kidding me, are you going to tell me that I cannot tell a patient that they need a brace and particular brace because really the regression of brace at that time, the uh, Boston brace didn't do the 3D dimension. And the regal brace was the, is still the brace that very... Um, a fit fitting what we're doing, but now there are many other braces that are doing a great job. And I said, I'm sorry, I learned, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give the information. And the uh, and surgeons at the beginning were hesitant, la la la. But if you are if you are um, confident in your own skin as a surgeon and as a therapist. Yeah, we had a match, and I work with great people at HSS. Yeah, Hagit, I I cannot say enough how much of a gift you are. Oh no, thank you. I just I transfer, like I said I before, I'm gonna I'm you transfer, but your passion is so strong. And uh, before we started this conversation, we were talking, and I was getting emotional because my story is so different and I wish that I had you on my journey because well, I, then maybe I wouldn't have had surgery um and it was a very different time when you know parents didn't know how to the resources weren't there um but you are such a gift and I I can't say that enough because you have taught so many people and I've seen you on Instagram and your your passion when you talk about it through the breath and opening up and just right. your 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 gestures and you know your discipline and your strength in your voice is a you know I feel I feel I really it's like oh it's it's a it's a meditation of correction. Yeah. But you're you're it's a meditation of correction, but it's also the kindest force that you Correct. can give a patient Correct. who needs the information and the discipline and the knowledge. And you give that with such respect for that person. Thank um, you. Thank you. I really love, I, 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 I love the people. I yeah, love that's the obvious. People. That's obvious. And if you write, and, and it's an art, it's an art, but it's it, the person, yes, the people that come, uh, it, that's what's important, to connect with yeah. everybody and deliver the hope through your hands and your voice and your calmness and your education. Because, yeah, you know, we all need, we, we all need a hope. Yeah. Or something to look forward and and know yeah. that you're doing something for yourself. And and you you do it beautifully. I thank you. It does. It doesn't. It. I. I cannot express how you do it. What I can say is, if you do not follow Dr. Hagit on Instagram, go, because you will see her passion bleeding through the screen in her voice <laughs> is there anything else yes uh, thank you thank you is there anything else that you would like to share with us 
today on this episode of the T3 Fit Scoliosis podcast. Um, I'm trying to think. Listen, uh, just something that comes to my mind is if any, you know, um, free screening or screening for patients is used to be mandatory in schools. Mm-hmm. In our age, I don't know how was it in the United States, but for sure, even in Israel and Europe, and we know about it, every child every year will bend over the nursing school, will take scoliometer or just look and observe if you see the forward bending test is a clinical, simple test that every mother can do. Basically, just having her child stand and bend forward and mm-hmm. checking levels. Okay. Bending forward all the way down as, as far as they can and checking. And if you see something, don't wait. Because unfortunately, I get everywhere. It's, 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 it's everywhere. Everywhere around the world. People come first diagnosed with 40 and 50 degrees. But these 50 degrees didn't come overnight. Yeah. It started a year ago, two years ago, or more. So if someone was looking, look at your children, make an effort once every half a month, ask your, your girl to stay with the brain and, and, and pants, have her bent forward, especially if you know that there is a history in your family. You can... If everybody along your village, your city, your community, somehow children, because it's really a shame. It's a, it's a time bomb. If you don't treat it before the spine finish growing at age 15, 16, basically you lost the window of opportunity. Mm-hmm. And that window from age 10, where, where, where it's usually comes idiopathic scoliosis adolescent come at age 10 and it's until age 15 16 or whenever you finish growing yeah this window of opportunity is for the rest of their life so promote screening everywhere a fitness instructor make a screening day in your pilates clinic in your new york sports club something yeah check children in school in ballet in, in gymnastic to save them to help them yeah because because the treatment for scoliosis is not something that it's so so easy and children can have you know better start rather than going through things later yeah and it's it's when they learn how to do it it becomes second nature and catch it while it's it's catch it when it's the beginning nighttime bracing today supporting nighttime bracing when it's 15 degree 20 degree not when it's 35 yeah yeah good dr hagit i would like to thank you with huge open arms and say thank you thank you so much for being a guest on the t3 fit scoliosis podcast um there are a list of places where you can find dr hagit all of which i will mention uh one of them is instagram which we spoke about briefly shroth new york city is her handle she also has a website shroth new york city.com she also has the scoliosis and spine online learning.com website. And she also has a Facebook page, which is Shroth New York City. And she has multiple uh, videos on YouTube as well. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to reach out to her. If you have just been diagnosed, reach out to Dr. Hagit, reach out to anybody, pull your resources and ask your questions and get empowered. And we are there to support you and to help you. And Dr. Hagit is a gift to all of us. So I would like to say thank you. 
I would like to say thank you once again. Um, thank you for being